So hello and welcome to yet another episode of Top 10s. I'm your interim host, Carl Small, and today we're talking about 10 unbelievable cases of sleeping through the impossible. And as with all the videos here at Top 10s, this one is based on an original article submitted to us by a member of our illustrious, handsome writing team. In particular, Ian Forte. If they provided links for us to their socials and stuff, they'll be linked below alongside my own. But let's get to it. Also, since this video concerns sleep, I'm wearing my pyjamas right now and have made myself a nice cup of cocoa. It is four o'clock in the afternoon. Ah, smooth. Have you ever awoken to discover that you slept through something noteworthy or important overnight? Many of us can sleep through an alarm, guilty, but some people can sleep through an earthquake or a break-in. Other people are adept at sleeping anywhere and can doze off on buses or planes despite being surrounded by strangers and the sound of engines. And then there's even a few cases of people sleeping through events that most would consider life-altering. For example, consider number 10. The Iraqi man slept through the invasion and takeover of his town. You can't be expected to know what's going on outside your window 24-7, but there are times when you should probably be paying attention to local events. Back in 2014, Mohammed Abu Ali, a clockmaker from Iraq, went to sleep in the town of Makmur like any other day. When he woke up, he was the only man left in town, or the only citizen of the town left anyway. Overnight, Kurdish forces had evacuated the town and an ISIS force had moved in and taken over. With all the citizens gone, Ali was the only resident left having slept through it all. More remarkable though is that he didn't even notice what was going on until after he woke up. For several hours in the morning he put it about his house, he watched a movie, he fixed his air conditioning and he did what he'd normally do. And it wasn't actually until the evening when he heard the call to prayer and realised that something was wrong. Specifically when the call did come he didn't recognise the voice so he went outside to see what was going on and found himself held at gunpoint. He had to prove his identity to the fighters and they eventually allowed him to go home where he stayed safely until the town was later retaken. So we're cheating a little bit with this one because it isn't exactly a person but it is one of the most remarkable tales of sleep through the impossible. In this case, it was a snail, and he must have been very tired indeed. In the mid-1800s, a collection of snails was donated to the British Museum in London. The snails had been collected in Egypt and were therefore items of interest to the museum crowd. The snails were glued to cards, labelled and added to the collection. Four years later, a zoologist noticed something coating one of the shells, something snails do to prevent themselves from dehydrating. Suspecting that the snail was altogether less dead than being glued to a card in a museum would lead one to believe, the snail was removed and plopped into some water. Minutes later, a head emerged and the snail came back to life. The snail was kept alive in the zoologist's care until it truly died in 1852. Number eight, a woman slept through the entire Jonestown massacre. Jim Jones led a group of followers of his People's Temple's cult to their death as what become known as the Jonestown massacre back in 1978. Over 900 members died after drinking a fruit drink laced with cyanide, which is where the modern phrase, drink the Kool-Aid comes from. So this is where I drink the Kool-Aid, right? Go to this little island and then die. Um, in reference to insinuating something has gone all in on cult-like beliefs. And as an aside, um, they didn't drink Kool-Aid at the Jonestown Massacre, they drank a cheap knockoff version. And it was reported as Kool-Aid because the reporter didn't know what the knockoff thing was. And Kool-Aid have been trying to distance themselves from that association ever since. You're the Kool-Aid guy. The massacre came after the cult was being investigated for holding people against their will. A US congressman had travelled to the compound located in Guyana after they fled the US and the cult turned on him as he tried to leave, shooting him and several others in the process. One cult member, a 76 year old woman named Hyacinth Thrash, fled to her bedroom to hide after hearing of the violence. She fell asleep there as Jones ordered everyone to take their own lives, killing the children first before the adults joined in. When she awoke, she discovered she was alone and thought everyone else had died. Number 7. Rapper Eminem slept through his Academy Award win. For many people, being honoured with an award is a pretty big deal. Attending awards ceremonies has always been treated with a degree of reverence, which is why the Academy Awards broadcast is still such a big deal every single year. However, that's not always the case for everyone. Everyone here meaning Eminem. In 2003, Eminem's hit song Lose Yourself from the movie 8 Mile was nominated for an Academy Award, and it ended up winning. But the rapper wasn't present to accept it. He had figured he wasn't going to win anyway, so he decided to stay home with his daughter and ended up falling asleep before the award was even presented. He wanted to arrest her so he could take her to school the next day. Oh. Number 6. POW Edwin Rose slept through The Great Raid. The Great Raid was one of the most famous POW rescues of the Second World War. It took place at a place called Cabatano in the Philippines and saw the liberation of over 500 POWs held by Japan. The raid was conducted by army rangers, guerrillas and Alamo scouts. 
One POW who didn't have quite as successful a liberation was Canadian Edwin Rose. Rose had a reputation around the camp for being just a little bit weird, maybe due to the fact he was already elderly, almost blind, deaf, and just quirky to begin with. Rose had not been in the military, he was a civilian who'd been rounded up, and it was believed he was a mail carrier in Singapore. He'd been in prison for years, and others believed he'd been badly affected, mental health-wise. When rescue came in the night, Rose was confused, hard of hearing and with bad vision anyway. He wasn't 100% sure what the hell was going on, but managed to stumble to the latrine. He went back to the barracks having missed the entire liberation and didn't notice that everyone had gone. So he returned to bed thinking he may have also just passed out on the toilet. The next morning he realised that everyone was gone so he shaved and walked out of camp. Gorillas later found him walking down the road. Number 5. More than one diabetic has slept through a dog eating their toes. We've all heard stories of heroic animals waking their owners to alert them of dangers. So how about the opposite? More than one diabetic dog owner has experienced sleeping through their canine companion eating the toes right off their feet. And this is like fully eating, not just biting. Like these people woke up missing like, you know, a quantifiable percentage of their little piggies. Diabetics can frequently suffer from poor circulation issues and problems like peripheral neuropathy, which can lead to serious damage to a diabetic's toes and feet, which can require amputation. A man in Michigan, for example, didn't fully realize that his toe was infected due to nerve damage he was suffering. He actually needed an amputation, but didn't realize it. Luckily, his Jack Russell Terrier Kiko was an amateur physician and gnawed the man's toe off in his sleep. Tests on the stump revealed that the infection had traveled to the bones. The rest was amputated as well. The dog may very well have saved his life by forcing him to go to the hospital. And this isn't a one-off case, because in 2008, a woman in Illinois suffered much the same fate when a dog ate her toe after she suffered an infection from a hangnail. Good boy. Number four, Dick Van Dyke fell asleep on a surfboard and got lost at sea. This story may need to be taken with a grain of salt or two, but it did come right from the mouth of the man himself. According to Dick Van Dyke, he once got lost at sea because he fell asleep on a surfboard. To hear Van Dyke tell it, he was learning to surf and he'd just got out beyond the breakers when he passed out. He woke up and couldn't see land anywhere and had no idea which way to go to find it. I thought it's over. And then right out of a Disney movie, a pod of dolphins showed up and pushed him back to land. And as outlandish as this sounds, Dick Van Dyke has told the story multiple times throughout his career and has never seemed to deviate from his story or act like he was joking. We may very well have dolphins to thank for the career of Dick Van Dyke. Number three. A woman fell asleep on a plane and was stuck there for hours after it landed. Some people can conk right out the moment they sit down on a plane. Red eye flights are set up to help you sleep. They turn the lights down, you get a pillow, maybe an eye mask, and off you go. If you're flying for eight hours across an ocean, it may be the perfect chance to catch up on some shut eye, but even the heartiest sleeper tends to wake up when a plane comes in for a landing. The lights come on and everyone gets up to leave. Back in 2010, a woman woke up on a plane in Philadelphia, which was where she intended to be. Unfortunately, the plane had landed several hours earlier before she'd woken up and she was alone on an empty, locked plane. 50 passengers had left the plane along with the entire crew before the plane was locked, leaving her on board. She ended up suing the airline for false imprisonment. She says a cleaning crew woke her up, but she was locked on the plane until law enforcement decided she wasn't a terrorist. I envy people who can fall asleep on planes. It's just something I cannot do. Number two, Ozzy Osbourne once fell asleep during a driving test. That's just, that's so Ozzy. Not everyone passes their driver's test the first time out. Not everyone has to take it 19 times either. That was the magic number for Ozzy Osbourne, who finally became a legal driver at age 60. So what was the problem with the 18 previous attempts, you ask? Well, if you know anything all about Ozzy Osbourne, you could probably make an educated guess. <laughs> The Prince of Darkness offered up one explanation for a failure during an interview. He claimed he was so out of it that he actually fell asleep in the middle of a test. When he woke up, he found a little note in the car telling him he'd failed. It wasn't made clear if he'd actually been driving at the time he fell asleep or not, but no one died at least. So it wasn't a failed test, but a success of survival, if nothing else. And because of the Osborne, he's hearing he's not the best, you know, after like, you know, decades of being on stage with Black Sabbath. So he's just asleep on the sofa as you could just hear a smoothie machine that catches fire. It catches fire. <laughs> it's so good. Never change, Ozzy, never change. Number one, Hitler slept through most of D-Day. 
World War II has been a source of endless speculation for historians, writers, politicians, and of course, people in the comments section of videos talking about it. How things could have happened differently, how things did happen, and what things happened that we never realised for years afterwards. There's no way to change the past, of course, and we can't always trust new information or theories that people come up with either, but even what we do know can be surprising and helpful in learning about how it all unfolded. For example, consider the timeline of Adolf Hitler's activities during the events of D-Day, the name given to the Allied invasion of Normandy that marked a major turning point in the war. So it's believed that the Germans may have had more success repelling the Allied invasion, if not for the fact Hitler made a very specific order that was not allowed to be circumvented. Don't wake him up. So history notes that Hitler went to sleep on June 5th, the day before the invasion, in order that no one was allowed to bother him, which in of itself might not have been too big a deal for the Germans, if not for the fact Hitler had also instructed all of his generals that they were not allowed to make major decisions without his approval, so they could not counter the Allied attack until their leader woke up. Word is that Hitler slept to somewhere between 11 and noon, and by then it was far too late and he still thought that Normandy was a diversion anyway. Had he set an alarm or let people wake him up or give other people the opportunity to make decisions on his behalf when he was unconscious, history may have painted a vastly different picture of that day. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video. As mentioned at the start, I've been your host, Carl Smallwood. This video is based on an original article by Ian Forte. Links to my social can be found below. Um, I also help host over on uh, the sister channels, Two Top Tens, Biographics and Geographics. I've got my own channels, Fact Theme with Carl Smallwood and Wiki Weekends, which have an altogether more relaxed and casual tone than this one. For example, we don't drink cocoa as much as we drink vodka. Also, I should probably show up on like sick ass pajamas. So you might, this is just a t-shirt what I've got. Yeah. I might, bright orange um, uh, Naruto Hello Kitty um, sleep pants from Japan. Like hell, goddamn yes. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you've got something to say about it, leave a comment. In particular, I'd like to invite comments about my presentation and hosting style, which I've been trying to refine to better fit the voice and style um, uh, as established by my more aerodynamic predecessor, Simon Whistler, uh, while also trying to you know, retain elements of my own personality, which is partly why I got hired to, to do this. So yeah, leave some comments or feedback about that. I'll try to respond to it as best I can. Um, you know, I'm hopefully becoming more of a confident host and narrator as I'm reading from these articles. I'm not used to reading from a teleprompter, but otherwise, you know, thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, have the day you all deserve.